Hello, this is The Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Chinzia 6672. Let's start off the wrist check. I'm wearing this Casio W800, which I think is just such a better choice than the F91W. And Greg was wearing my Pagani Design YS011. Greg watched episode 4 again and asked Master Skywalker what was the name of the species who informed on them at Moss Eisley. He said Kubaz. He said there was a huge conflict between the Kubaz and Wado species, the Toydarians. They called it the War of the Noses. All right, let's take a look at the watch. Comes in this box. One thing I wanted to point out too, it came with a sizing tool. So that's and a pretty good one too. Not one of those really cheap, flimsy ones. So that's always nice when you get a $15 watch if you get a good sizing tool with it. But here it is. This is the third Chinzia on my channel. I've been saying Quinzixia, and that's not right. It's Chinzia. I remember I learned how to say it once, but I forgot. But Chinzia is how you say it. This is an ultra affordable Captain Willard homage. The Seiko 6105 was an appropriate prop for the movie Apocalypse Now as it proved to be a popular choice among U.S. soldiers in that war because it could handle the harsh jungle conditions better than anything the Army issued. This Chinzia shares its look and design, but not its ruggedness. If you don't like the blue, you can get it in black, which is the only color the original was available in. The watch is 41.3 millimeters if you measure at the bezel, but 43.7 millimeters if you measure at the case. 47.1 millimeter lug to lug with inverted end links. It's 13.2 millimeters thick. Has a 20 millimeter lug width, which tapers down to 18 at the clasp. And weighs 121 grams on the hollow bracelet with two links removed. The bezel action is really loose and there's a ton of back play. It's a 60 click. So not very good action. It does look nice though. I mean, look at the sides of it. It's a nice looking bezel. Just lousy action. Then we have the dial. The dial has no sunburst effect. And then we have the minute markers on the rehot. And then we have the indices. And of course, this is meant to look like a Captain Willard. So we got the square indices there. Then it says Chinzia up top with the Chinzia logo. Then on the bottom it says quartz water resistance, 30 meters. That's all you get. This is not a real dive watch. This is a dive style watch. The timing bezel, I guess you can use it to time your macaroni and cheese. You're not going to take this in the water to dive. Then we have the hands. We have fence post, minute, and hour hand. And then we have a stoplight second hand. That stoplight second hand is a nice touch because usually on a watch in this price, you're not going to see that. So I like that. And then we have a date at the three. Then we have a unsigned push-pull crown. The crown action doesn't feel really loose, but when you go to set it, you have to be really careful. See, just, just the act of pushing it will move it. So you got to kind of hold it. And it, as long as you're really careful, you can press it in without it jumping. But you have to be really careful. So it's kind of still kind of difficult to set accurately. That's just the reality of these cheap quartz watches. Then we have the crystal, it's just flat mineral glass, nothing special about it, but does the job. Then we have the case, the case is a cushion case, it's also a chrome plated alloy, you don't get steel in this price range. But it does look nice, I think they did a good job with it. Not all chrome plated cases are created equal, and some of them feel really cheap and chintzy, this one does not. 
And of course, it's got these built-in crown guards here. That's one of distinct feature of the Captain Willard. That's what distinguishes it from a turtle. The turtle doesn't have this crown guard. Then we have the case back. The case back is coin edge, but it's not a screw up the moon. It's a pry off. And I, it has a little slot to pry and the slot is so tiny I could barely see it. And it made one reviewer think that this was a real screw down, but it's not. So I was eventually able to pry it off, but the slot is so tiny that it was difficult. But yes, it's a pry, it's a press on case back. And it says quartz movement, gives the model number 6672, says 3 ATM water resistant. And then we have the Chinzia name and logo in the middle. Underneath the case back is the SL28 movement. This is a pretty common quartz movement and watches in this price range. Nothing special about it. And the crown action is not great, but I've seen a lot worse. Then we have the bracelet. The bracelet's a big disappointment. It's hollow. At least we do have inverted end links, though. But they're hollow inverted end links. And look at this, though. Look at all that marking there. This uh, bracelet's been through the ringer. So this is some serious quality control. They should have, when the bracelet came out like this, they should have just thrown it away. But they put it on the watch anyway and sent it to me. And this is just really bad looking. Let's just look at that. The other side of the bracelet doesn't do it. It looks fine. So it's just this half. But the bracelet's rally. And this is one of those clasps that I really don't like. It has this single side press. But it takes up all the room in the clasp. That way, that's why you only get two holes of micro adjust. And not three. And these links are pr pretty big. So you need three. And it's just a simple press clasp. And I just don't like it. In fact, if I was to keep this watch, I would probably take this bracelet off and put it on a strap. Because I think the watch head isn't bad. Just this bracelet is no good. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It does look and wear nice. Sits flat on the wrist. It's a big watch. Captain Willard's R. But it has a fairly short lug to lug though, considering how big the watch is. And here's the watch on a blue tropic strap. Doesn't that look better? Yeah, I, I just like this so much better than on the bracelet it came on. Here we are in the loom room. There's no loom on the bezel, but you aren't going to die with this watch anyway, so I guess that really doesn't matter that much. As we speed up the time, we see a pretty good green glow. The indices are beginning to fade fairly quickly, though. But the hands are what matter, and fortunately they are much better. This is by no means good loom, but still not bad for a $15 watch. What I like about this watch? Well, I like the case. I think that it's shaped nicely, and for a chrome-plated alloy, it's pretty good. I do like the dial. I think they did a good job with it. The dial doesn't look like a $15 watch dial. It does have inverted end links. Helps a big watch wear smaller. And I do like this stop light second hand. What are my grapes and groans? This single sided press clasp with only two slots of micro adjust. You need at least three for a bracelet with links this big. Also the bracelet's discolored. We got some serious markings here from the machining. And personally, I think they should have just thrown this one away.
And the case back, the notch to remove it is barely there. And I had a heck of a time getting a pry tool in there. And the crown action is just loose and it makes setting it difficult. Do I recommend this watch? No, the watch head isn't bad, but the bracelet is a real deal breaker. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Chinzia 6672. And I will be back with another review or unboxing. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you do like this watch, because you intend to put it on a strap, then be sure to use my affiliate link and I'll get a tiny commission. Bye.